long dark night Now my world is bright Islam is my sight Now I found the light After those long dark nights Now my world is bright Islam is my sight السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الرسول الصادق الأمين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين My dear brothers and sisters in Islam from all around the world Welcome to a new live episode of our program The Straight Path It's a great honor and a great pleasure for me to be with all of you here tonight and to be coming, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, uh, on Huda TV right after Isha prayer, right after Salatul Isha from, uh, live from Mecca. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Such a great blessing to know that the program that was right before you was Salatul Isha, the great prayer of Salatul Isha coming live from Mecca al Mukarram. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Such a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, to get into the topic that we're talking about tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the final episode before the beginning of the month of Sha'ban. Before the month of Sha'ban begins, this is the only episode that we have. So inshallah next week when we, uh, when we have our episode on Saturday, we're going to be well into the month of Sha'ban. And if you, I don't know if you believe it or not, but we are only 33 days away from Ramadan. Subhanallah. Only 33 days away from Ramadan. Time is flying, to say the least. Uh, I remember just a few weeks ago, it sounds like it was just yesterday, and I was telling you that we are 60 days away from the month of Ramadan. And we said that we're going to start getting ready for the month of Ramadan from the beginning of the month of Rajab. And we put, if you remember, we put a five-step plan in order for us to achieve our goals, which is to get ready, to get uh, rolling, inshallah, when Ramadan begins right away. So, uh, subhanAllah. Alhamdulillah, do you remember these things? Do you still remember the five-step process? Or did you forget? If you did forget, uh, let me remind you quickly, inshallah, in these next few minutes. Let me remind myself as well. The first thing that we said in our five-step process is to make sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our every bad deed. So that we can begin, inshallah, the month uh, of Ramadan with a clean slate. So Alhamdulillah, I mean, that was the first thing. Then we said the second thing that we're going to do is that we're going to perfect the fara'id. We're going to perfect the obligatory acts and the compulsory acts of Islam, especially, especially focusing on our prayer. We said the brothers are going to pray in the masjid as much as they can, and the sisters are going to pray as soon as possible after the adhan comes in, inshallah. And then we said the, the third thing that we're going to do is that we're going to pray two rak'ahs at the end of the night, in the last third of the night, we're going to pray two rak'ahs uh, of uh, nafila, not uh, fard salah, but a nafila salah. And then we said the fourth thing that we're going to do is we're going to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, allow us to live until Ramadan and give us the opportunity to be amongst those who witness this year's Ramadan. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. And then we said the fifth and the last thing that we uh, are going to do together, inshallah, is we're going to start fasting at least one day a week. And we said preferably so that we can match within the sunnah of the, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We're going to try to fast either on Monday or, or Thursday, inshallah. Um, so these are the five things, my dear brothers and sisters, that we said that we're going to start working on uh, and trying to do for these two months. So alhamdulillah, almost a month of our plan is over. We are almost at the end of the month of Rajab and we're just about three days away from the beginning of the month of Sha'ban. 33 days to go. Mark your calendars, my dear brothers and sisters. 33 days to go until the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan. The beautiful month of Ramadan where on these days and on these nights of Ramadan the gates of the Jannah are open and the gates of the Hellfire are closed. SubhanAllah. Maybe uh, you're following the news and you see a number of prominent figures dying in these days. People passing away in these days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. But make dua for yourself and for your family to be amongst those who witness this year's Ramadan. 
these same people who died today or died yesterday or, or are going to die next week or are going to die the night before Ramadan, these people witnessed last year's Ramadan and so did you. But the question is, who is going to witness this year's Ramadan? I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me and you amongst them bi ta'ala. And I just want to make an announcement that uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows me and He gives me life until the month of Ramadan, that I'm very happy to announce, inshallah, I'm going to be with you five days a week. We're not exactly sure what days of the week, but most likely they're going to be Sunday through Thursday uh, in a new program, inshallah, called Seeds of Change. Seeds of Change, and I'm going to tell you more about it, inshallah, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, Seeds of Change بإذن الله تعالى is going to be airing every single night during the weekdays, Sunday through Thursday, most likely, inshallah, uh, at, at midnight, midnight Mecca time بإذن الله تعالى, after you come back from uh, Salat al-Tarawih. We wanted to make it a time zone that can fit brothers and sisters from different parts of the world. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me. Please make dua for me because I'm uh, working very hard these days to uh, begin preparing for the program with the brothers uh, uh, in different aspects, whether it's the technical side, whether it's preparing the content and things like that. So please make dua for me. Going back to what we're talking about and we're saying the month of Ramadan is very close. And the month of Sha'ban is right around the corner. So we put a poll on our website, uh, on our Facebook page actually, I'm sorry, on the Huda TV Facebook page. And we asked the brothers and sisters from all around the world how they're doing when it comes to preparing for Ramadan and getting ready for Ramadan. So, um, so 64% of brothers and sisters said, yes, we are working to get ready for the month of Ramadan. And 36% of brothers and sisters said that they have not started preparing yet. So for the 64%, I say congratulations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you steadfast in your preparation for the month of Ramadan. And I want to tell you that you're doing the right thing. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Ameen, you're doing the right thing by getting ready for the month of Ramadan from now. And for the 36%, I want to tell you to please start today. Start this evening, start tonight to begin preparing for the beautiful month of Ramadan so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you preparing from now for the month of Ramadan and He blesses you and He guides you and He allows you to witness this beautiful month of Ramadan and to reap all the fruits and to plant all the seeds that you need to plant during the month of Ramadan so that we can achieve the goal of Ramadan so that you may achieve piety, so that you may achieve consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that you may achieve fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being on the straight path. But uh, we have to pause here for a bit and understand something. Let me tell you this. In order for us to prepare correctly for, for Ramadan, we have to do things not according to how we want to do them or how popular culture wants us to prepare for Ramadan. But we have to prepare according to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And let me tell you something here that I want you to memorize for your entire life and to teach to your children and to teach to all those around you. In order for any deed in Islam to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it needs to meet two conditions. Two conditions have to be met in order for any deed to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first condition is something called an and the second condition is something called al-ittiba'ah. an and al-ittiba'ah. an means the intention, to have the correct intention for doing the act in order for it to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing is called al-ittiba'ah. What is al-ittiba'ah? Al-ittiba'ah literally means following, but we can translate it into in accordance. In accordance. In accordance with what? In accordance with the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Islamic Sharia. Uh, SubhanAllah. Take a look at that. Any deed that's accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to meet these two conditions. You have to have the correct intention. You can't do just an action without intention. It won't be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to do it with the correct intention. And at the same time, you have to do it in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does that mean? It means avoiding innovations. It means avoiding innovations. So are you telling me that maybe I will pray a lot of rak'ahs and I will read, for example, a lot of Qur'an on such a specific occasion or something like that and it won't be accepted from me? Yes. Yes. Why? Because it was not in accordance to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad 
So what is an example of that? Let me give you an example of that as it relates to the subject that we're talking about, which is the month of Sha'ban. Uh, a few years ago, I was uh, living in the United States and then I came to Egypt to visit my family. And here, in, and it was during the month of uh, Sha'ban, I think this was, this was maybe, I think this was late 2010. So uh, I was uh, visiting some of my relatives here and it was during the, the month of, uh, of uh, Sha'ban. And then one of my relatives uh, told me, so you're not fasting today? I told him, fasting? Specifically today? He said, yeah. Why are you, why are you not fasting today? So I told him, for what? And he said, today is the middle of Sha'ban. Today is the 15th day of Sha'ban. So I told him, oh, are we supposed to fast? And then he went and he called another one of our relatives and he said, you know, Usama, he's, he's not a good person. You know, he, he's not fasting today. He's not fasting in the middle of Sha'ban. So I was wondering, I'm like, I never learned this from anybody. I never learned from any of the scholars that I learned with. I never even witnessed it in my community in the United States or nothing like that. So what was the case? And then I came to realize that a lot of people in different parts of the world, they specify fasting the 15th day of Sha'ban and praying a lot specifically on that night, the night of the 15th. So and, and, the, and the, uh, they say that they're doing that because of a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, a hadith that does not exist. It's not a hadith that does not exist. It's not, it's not a hadith. And people are doing this bid'ah and this innovation. So do you think people like that, this act will be accepted from them? Obviously not. It would not be accepted from them. Why? Because they are not doing it in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. What if they have the correct intention? They may have the correct intention. And maybe they're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not doing it to show off. But if it's not in accordance to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and according to Islamic law, and according to Islamic sharia, then it will not be accepted. So uh, just to remind you, two conditions in order for any deed to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to have the correct intention, and your deed has to be in accordance to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this all leads me to the topic that we are talking about here tonight that I'm going to be joined to be talking about with in the next segment ta'ala by Sheikh Zain Abu Hamza. Sheikh Zain Abu Hamza is joining us from Australia and we're going to be talking about the merits of the month of Sha'ban and we will also be talking about the innovations of the month of Sha'ban so that we can do the merits of the month of Sha'ban and we can increase in them and we can do these good deeds and reap the fruits of the month of Sha'ban and get ready for the month of Ramadan. And at the same time, we can also get rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not doing. By not doing what? By not doing the innovations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us against. So stay tuned, inshallah. I'll see you in just a few minutes. My world is bright. Islam is my sign. Ask Hoda. If you're still in Mecca or close by to Mecca, then you have to know that you are still in the state of Ihram. As long as it is not for sale, mm -hmm. then he does not have to pay zakah for it. Forbade praying witr, similar to Maghrib prayer. Mm -hmm. So whoever prays witr three rak'ahs and sitting after the second rak'ah as if he's praying Maghrib prayer, this is forbidden, this is haram. To euthanasia is permissible with animals but not with human beings. If an animal is suffering, killing an animal for a legitimate reason is permissible. Both uh, are acceptable, but the majority say that after the rakur is the place of uh, qunut. But both was reported. Have a question or concern on your mind? Hoda TV decided, based on popular demand, we will be bringing you an additional episode of Ask Hoda with Sheikh Azim bin Luqman Al-Hakim, live from Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Tech Talk. We're going to look how to create a website and which Islamic websites to actually visit. What inspired you to create your own website? One of the challenges mm. that we, we, we face every day the site or the, the application should be accessible worldwide. I remember uh, when I was younger, um, 
uh, one of my friends uh, asked me to to convince his father to to get him a, a desktop, even even the laptop. Uh, when, when, you, when you come, if you compare both of them in terms of uh, cost, uh, laptop roughly um, cost twice the money if you, if, you, if you compare it with the desktop. Hackers, the word hackers, most of uh, the young, the youth people are very interesting about that word. They say, hey, I'd like to be a hacker. Because there is a type of hacker, great, doing great job. We call them uh, white hat hacker. for everyone. Three, two, one. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? Every the firefighter uses what to control fire? Water or rocks? Now these two teams go head to head on pulling the blue rope. Now if one person goes over this line right here, the other team loses. Very simple rules. This challenge is worth five points. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? Fun is for everyone. So get ready to have some fun. Check out these cool competitions between kids. It's important to have fun and it's also important to be a good sport. So tune in to Fun for Everyone. You what don't want to miss it. When I grow up? What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? Now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. Islam is alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome back to our program, The Straight Path. We are honored that you're continuing to join us in this segment and we're really honored that we are joined by a very special guest, Sheikh Zaini Dean Johnson Abu Hamza, who's uh, coming from Australia. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him. He's not living in Australia currently, but he is originally from Australia. Uh, inshallah, we're going to be discussing some of the merits of the month of Sha'ban and also talking about the innovations, the common innovations that we uh, witness during the month of Sha'ban from many people from different parts of the world and how we can avoid them as, the, as Muslims living today, inshallah. Um, let me remind you of the phone numbers, inshallah, so that you can join us in this discussion uh, anytime, inshallah, in this segment. Give us a call at 002 248 or 249, inshallah. Again, the number is 002 248 or 249, inshallah. And also, for the first time on this program, alhamdulillah, rabbil ameen, you can give us a call through Skype through Skype, inshallah. I don't really know exactly how it works yet behind the scenes, but alhamdulillah, Brother Muhammad Tail, who is the program supervisor, mashallah, he's got it down. So uh, he'll be uh, hooking you up. The, the thing is, uh, the, the info is on your screen, inshallah, should be coming on your screen. Huda underscore TV, Huda underscore TV, inshallah, is how you can call us for free through Skype, inshallah. So uh, pick up the phone, I guess you can say on Skype, and inshallah, give us a call. Uh, Sheikh. Zainuddin, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, first of all, for joining us. May Allah reward you. Jazakallah khair, brother. It's a pleasure to be here. Barakallah feek. It's your first time on Huda TV, and I'm honored that it's on this program, alhamdulillah. No, I, I'm the one that's on it, brother. Alhamdulillah. Barakallah feek. Jazakallah khair. Um, can you believe it? We're 33 days away from the month of Ramadan. Just three days from being in the month of Sha'ban. Time is flying, isn't it? Yeah, I was just uh, I was just thinking that uh, just a few days ago, when the brother mentioned about this program, uh, he he told me, "What's your plan for Sha'ban?" And it was only then that it really hit me that uh, we're only a few days away from Sha'ban. Zakalak, and if I can just stop you for just a second, we're having a small technical difficulty with the audio, so we're going to take a short break, my dear brothers and sisters. We'll come back. We'll continue our discussion with Sheikh Zaini Din, inshallah. So stay with us. Ask Huda. If you're still in Mecca or close by to Mecca, then you have to know that you are still in the state of Ihram. As long as he, it is not for sale, mm -hmm. then he does not have to pay zakah for it. Forbade praying witter, similar to Maghrib prayer. Mm -hmm. So whoever prays witter three rak'ahs, 
and sitting after the second rak'ah as if he's praying Maghrib prayer, this is forbidden, this is haram. To euthanasia is permissible with animals but not with human beings. If an animal is suffering, killing an animal for a legitimate reason is permissible. Both uh, are acceptable, but the majority say that after the rakur is the place of uh, qunut. But both was reported. Have a question or concern on your mind? Hoda TV decided, based on popular demand, he will be bringing you an additional episode of Ask Hoda with Sheikh Asim bin Luqman al-Hakim, live from Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Tech Talk. We're going to look how to create a website and which Islamic websites to actually visit. What inspired you to create your own website? One of the challenges that we, we, we face every day the site or the, the application should be accessible worldwide. I remember uh, when I was younger, um, uh, one of my friends uh, asked me to, to convince his father to, to get him a, a desktop. Even, even the laptop, uh, when, when you come, if you compare both of them in terms of uh, cost, uh, laptop roughly um, cost twice the money if you, if, you, if you compare it with the desktop. Hackers, the word hackers, most of uh, the young the youth people are very interested in that word. They say, hey, I'd like to be a hacker. Because there is a type of hacker, great, doing a great job. We call them a uh, white hat hacker. Fun for everyone. Three, two, one. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? As the firefighter uses what to control fire? Water or rocks? Now these two teams go head to head on pulling the blue rope. Now if one person goes over this line right here, the other team loses. Very simple rules. This challenge is worth five points. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? Fun is for everyone. So get ready to have some fun. Check out these cool competitions between kids. It's important to have fun and it's also important to be a good sport. So tune in to Fun for Everyone. You don't want to miss it. When I grow up, what will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? Now my world is bright. Islam is my sign. My dear brothers and sisters, we apologize for this uh, audio uh, technical difficulty. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin, we are back with you. And we're honored to be joined by Sheikh Zainuddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa I apologize for, for the mistake. Uh, we wanted to make sure people hear you clearly without this sound that's been going on. Qadr Allah, brother. No problem. Alhamdulillah. Al so let's get right into it, inshallah. Um, let's talk about some of the merits of the month of Sha'ban. Is it really true that the month of Sha'ban is special? Or some, some people try to tell me that the, the month of Sha'ban doesn't really have any merits. But does it have special merits? Yeah, good question, brother. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The month of Sha'ban is extremely important, not only for Muslims, but for every person in the world, brother. The, the reason for this is because it is the month that the deeds of the whole year, the deeds of the whole year, will be shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Sha'ban. Mm. And this is from a correct hadith. Uh, from uh, from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and <coughs> so that basically means, brother, that uh, all your good deeds and also all of your bad deeds. Mm. Uh, if you remember, uh, we've spoken about the angels that are writing down. They're writing down day and night. They're with you, only lifting the pen when you're sleeping. Mm. Okay. Well, these deeds will be shown. These deeds. De these deeds are shown every year, and they will be shown to Allah subhanahu wa taala in the month of Sha'ban and uh, that means that every prayer that you did, every piece of charity that you gave, every uh, smile that you gave to your brother or shaking hands just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. all this will be written on your page and will be handed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
But on the same token, uh, every, I'm sorry, but every sin will mm. also be shown. Subhanallah, will that's, also why, be shown. that's why we said uh, we need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we put it in our five step process to make sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that is an extremely, uh, extremely good piece of advice, brother. Because uh, this month, uh, if we look, every, every piece of, uh, uh, for example, every backbiting that we made, every salah that we, we slept in at Fajr time, all this is going to be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Sha'ban. Mm. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, there's a correct hadith from Aisha radiallahu anha, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not fast any other month completely except for the month of Ramadan. And he did not fast any other month as much as he fasted in the month of Sha'ban. And in another narration, it says that he fasted the whole month except for a little bit. Mm. Why do you think that is? Do you think maybe the Prophet ﷺ was getting himself ready for the month of Ramadan by fasting so often? Good question, brother. And the Sahaba asked the same question. SubhanAllah. They asked the, the, they asked <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ why he was fasting in this month so much. And the Prophet ﷺ said that he wished for his deeds to be shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he was fasting. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Barakallahu feek. We're joined also on Skype by Sheikh Abdul Rahim McCarthy. Sheikh Abdul Rahim, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Sheikh, can you hear me? Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm having I'm having some uh, difficulties uh, listening to the audio. I, I can't quite hear it. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, inshallah. It looks it looks like we're having some technical uh, difficulties, inshallah. So uh, uh, we'll try to get Sheikh Abdul Rahim McCarthy back with us. It looks today it looks like it's the day for all types of audio problems and technical problems. So. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Um, what, else, what else are the merits of the month of Sha'ban? Well, the most important thing is that when, we, when our deeds are given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see, you see, Osama, sometimes during the year, okay, uh, you find in Ramadan we're very active. You find uh, around Hajj time, uh, Arafah, Yawm al-Arafah, we're very mm. active. Mm. Uh, Ashura, active. Uh, but as time goes on, you know, we tend to become a little bit lazy throughout the year. Yes. You know, we're busy with work, busy with family. Busy There's not with a lot studies. of special events in these past few months. Yeah. 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 So uh, when this month Sha'ban comes along, it's, it's the last month. You see, this is, the, this is the thing. A lot of people work very hard in Ramadan. And even there's some people who work very hard or work hard in Ramadan and don't do anything the rest of the year. Mm. They relax. They think, well, I, I, I did Ramadan, you know, I don't need anything else. You know what I call these people? <laughs> I call them seasonal workers. Uh, yes, uh, or Ramadan Muslims. Yes. Exactly, Ramadan Muslims. I call them seasonal wor workers because basically what happens, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're not talking about someone else, we're talking about ourselves. All of us are really seasonal Muslims. What we do, okay, is subhanAllah, we work for a special season. You know how, for example, in, in the West, I know in the United States, the best job that you can get is a per quote unquote permanent full time job. Yeah. If you can't get that, what's the next best thing? The next best thing is to be a contractor somewhere. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. And then what's the, what's the next best thing? To be a part time worker. Yeah. And then what's the next quote unquote best thing? To be a seasonal worker. Mm. But it's really like at the bottom at the bottom of the scale. What do you mean by seasonal worker? A person that works, you know, for a specific season during Thanksgiving when they need a lot of people or, you know, works during the time of Christmas or something like that. And then what happens after that? They get laid off mm. or they themselves leave the job. Yeah. Are we becoming like that? There are, uh, there are people that are like this. But I mean, what, what these people don't understand is it's a misunderstanding. They possibly believe that uh, Ramadan is the most important month. And it is. It's a very important month. But... If you look at it, it is the start of the year of deeds. Mm. It is not the end of the year of deeds. So if you only, if you only uh, do your actions in Ramadan, and then the rest of the, the year, 
And you know, brother, sometimes you, no, they're like ghosts. You don't, see any, you don't see them in the mosque. Mm. They don't come to the mosque. They don't, uh, you know. And uh, if they leave that until the next Ramadan, can you imagine when their deeds are shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can you imagine, uh, you know, it's going to be a big empty page uh, from Ramadan until the next Ramadan. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's a dangerous thing. SubhanAllah, what are some of the innovations that we need to uh, avoid during the month of Shaban? Some of the common innovations that a lot of us do. Uh, and I just want to say, brothers and sisters, feel free, inshallah, to give us a call and uh, join us in the discussion. And also ask us your questions at 002 248 or 249, inshallah. And also through Skype at Huda underscore TV, inshallah. Before I mention about the innovations, brother, we need to focus on the sunnah, first of all. Mm. Know what the sunnah is, because the innovations are many. But the sunnah is, is uh, you know, it's not as much as the innovations. So basically, if we know what the sunnah is, then everything else is an innovation. Exactly, mm. exactly. So basically, we know that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, throughout the year, he fasted on Mondays and Thursdays, okay? So this is something that we should put into our program. Uh, if we haven't already, we should try to put it into our program for Sha'ban. We also know that the Prophet Sallallahu used to fast the days of the, of the full moon, the 14th and 15th and 16th, mm. okay? So if we feel we can do it, then we should try to put that one into our program as well for the month of Sha'ban, okay? As for innovations, uh, uh, innovations in the month of Sha'ban are many. Uh, one of them, as you mentioned earlier, is to fast on the 15th specifically. Okay, specifically. And as you know, that fast is not, the Prophet ﷺ did not prescribe that fast alone. Okay, and actually there's a hadith that uh, Sheikh Albani, rahimahullah, uh, made uh, sahih, this hadith. He corrected it. Yeah, that that the the hadith of the prophet sallallahu that it is not permissible to uh, not permissible to fast past the 15th okay there is a correct hadith uh, about this now the scholars are in uh, khilaf difference of opinion on whether that's wh whether it's uh, permissible or whether it's uh, something that's makruh etc okay mm. uh, but the most correct view uh, ibn uthaymin has said is that if you're in a habit of fasting Mondays and Thursdays or fasting the days of the moon, then there is no problem to continue to fast, okay? But if you're the type of person that you think that it is, uh, it is a sunnah to fast from the 15th onwards, mm. which is what some people believe, then I'm sorry, but that, that becomes an innovation. Zakallah khairan, barakallah feek. We have Sheikh Abdurrahim McCarthy back with us. Hopefully this time things are working well. Assalamu alaikum. We have Sheikh Abdurrahim McCarthy back with us. Hopefully this time... Things I think I'm talking to myself. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin. It looks like... Sheikh Khanna, Barakallah Feek, thank you so much for joining us. Um, let me ask you, it looks like we're having some technical difficulties, some audio problems still, but let me just uh, give you the question, inshallah, and you take it from there. Um, what are some of the most common innovations that we have during the month of Shaban? Can you hear me now? Or you can't hear me now? I can hear you very well, alhamdulillah. Okay, exactly. Alhamdulillah uh, Rabbil Alameen wa salli wa sallam ala al-mab'ud rahmatan al-alameen nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een wa ba'd Some of the, the, the most famous innovations, there's a lot of innovation even when you read about the innovations in Sha'ban you become actually shocked at all the things that people innovated but the main thing that people have in, invented or innovated when it comes to uh, the, the Sha'ban is the 15th of Sha'ban mm. and obviously they have a lot of a hadith when it comes to that, but a hadith that are not authentic, that are fabricated, that are lies against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about fasting the day of the 15th of Sha'ban and about praying the night of the 15th of Sha'ban. And some of these hadith you'll find, for example, when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He tells them, or He tells the, the Muslims to uh, pray that night. 
And they have other hadith that say whoever prays that night, then he is promised the Jannah. Hmm. They have other hadith that say uh, that, that, that any different things about uh, this this 15th. However, there's no really authentic hadith about the 15th of Sha'ban. The only thing authentic that has been confirmed about the 15th of Sha'ban is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He will look to His creation, as the brother I heard mentioned a little bit ago, the Sheikh Al Badi considered to be authentic. This hadith is the only thing that's mentioned. However, as you see in this hadith, there's nothing that, that shows you about fasting the day or praying at night during this, this hadith. Hmm. And as the scholars of Islam mentioned, if there was any blessing in pray, praying during that night or fasting during that day, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would have been the first to do that. He would have been the first to tell us about that. Just like he told us about standing in the prayer during the night of Laylatul Qadr, when he said, "Man qama Laylatul Qadr imanan wa ihtisaba, ghufir lahu ma taqaddam min dhanbi." That whoever prays during the night of Al Qadr, the decree that his past sins through his iman and his ihtisab, meaning one and the reward, that his all of his past sins will be forgiven. Hmm. So the Prophet said, he pointed that out to the Muslims, and that came obviously in Bukhari and Muslim in a very clear, very famous hadith. So if, if doing the saying during the 15th of Sha'ban was authentic. It would have been well known in famous hadith that were authentic, can, uh, considered authentic by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And some of the things that they mention during this night that they do as well is that they have a certain salat that they make. They have a certain du'a that they make. They have mm -hmm. a salat. Some people call it albiya. Some people call it albara'a, where they stand and they pray with one thousand kulhu Allahu ahad. And they read surah al-khalas one thousand times during the prayer. And after they finish that, they have a certain du'a. And then they read certain scenes. They do all of these different things. And the crazy thing about it is you find a lot of these people who take a, a, a part in these type of things, that subhanAllah, that they uh, are people who don't even close guard on the daily prayers. They mm -hmm. are not the ones who close guard on doing that, which they are ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throughout the year. And you'll find them on these nights, subhanAllah, before Maghrib. When Maghrib comes, they're some of the first people to enter into the masjid. Hmm. They want to get these rewards about uh, that they have from these fabricated hadiths. It's one, one, one of Shabbat. the tricks of the shaitan, subhanAllah. And so we point out, many of the scholars mentioned, like uh, Al Imam Al Iraqi, who is a famous scholar of hadith, who mentions that all of these hadiths that talk about different actions and things you do during uh, the 15th of Sha'ban, all of these are batila, they're false. Hmm. None of them are authentic. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah he mentioned the same thing, that all of these hadith, none of them are authentic. And Imam al nawi and others mentioned similar things to that about, for example, the al prayer that they have when they pray during the night, that all of this is not authentic and is from a bid'ah, an innovation that was innovated into the religion by these people. Hmm. And all, another thing we should point out, which is very important, that is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to do something like that. Uh, for the 15th of Sha'ban, the night of Jum'ah, which is mm. the, the Jum'ah or the Friday, it's the best day of the week, the best day of the year. Khayr yom talat ali al-sham, the Prophet said. That's the best day that has been risen upon on the Friday. And the Prophet said, so forbid the Muslims to pass in the night. So you, it, it comes to making a ibadah, making mm. something that is from the Sunnah, you have to have obviously an hadith. And the question might come now, I should the brother mentioned some of that, is that the benefit, there is, because we have to and they make this clear, because a lot of people, they try to trick the ummah, they try to trick the Muslims, and they have these books they pass out about uh, Surah Yasin, mm -hmm. and the dua of the 15th of Sha'ban. You see these little books, they get passed out, and they try to make this an authentic thing. And they'll use certain hadith, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at his creation on the 15th of Sha'ban, mm -hmm. and the other hadith which is authentic, which came... And Sunan al Nasa'i, where uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he, and he, uh, about uh, the, 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 the deeds being raised during the month of Sha'ban, so mm. they mention these type of things, and the Prophet sallallahu used to fast Sha'ban or most of Sha'ban, as mm. it came in the Hadith of Aisha and Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. They'll mention these type of things, and the general people they get confused. So basically, they they mix the truth with falsehood yeah. in order to try to uh, so to misguide to people. That, Making a specific ibadah, specific mm. worship, that it is an innovation in the religion, and it's not accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it's not been confirmed 
Thank you so much, Sheikh Thank you so much, Sheikh Abdul Rahim McCarthy. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, apologize, we're running out of time. Uh, Sheikh Zainuddin, I want to ask you finally, because we have about a minute and a half, how are you getting ready for Ramadan? Well, alhamdulillah, uh, you know, I, I, I try to fast uh, Mondays and Thursdays as it is, uh, inshallah. So, you know, I'm, uh, of course, uh, going to try and put it in, put a program into my life uh, to try. And this is very important, Osama, that every Muslim, and I liked what you said earlier about the five, uh, five points that you put into your life. Uh, the month of Sha'ban, brothers and sisters, you should also try to adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as i will be trying to adhere to the to the life of the uh, to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i'm with you inshallah <coughs> fasting uh, as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fasted fasting on the monday and the thursday and i will be trying to uh, fast the days of the moon inshallah ta'ala and uh, yeah the, this is basically what we should be trying to do you know as long as we're putting in an effort as long as when our deeds reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when our deeds are shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's all knowing anyway but when our deeds are shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, the year finishes off on a good note mm. not not on a bad note and then we start uh, we, we make repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we begin next year next year the, the next year of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing our, our deeds on a clean slate Jazakallah khair and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this evening uh, it's a pleasure brother yeah. thank you so much inshallah hopefully you join us in future episodes of the program inshallah, inshallah. Um, my dear my dear brothers and sisters uh, it appears that we're not going to be able to, to take a break but I do need to take a break so uh, inshallah let's take a break for uh, just a minute uh, inshallah so I can get th some things ready for the next segment uh, and then inshallah we will continue. So if, if I can please uh, take a break for just a minute, bit Now my world is bright. Islam is my The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, narrated that when Allah, glory be to him, wishes good for someone, he bestows upon him understanding of the religion and that Allah makes the path to paradise easy for those who seek knowledge. Preoccupied by work or family in the modern world, a Muslim may struggle to find time for acquiring Islamic knowledge. To ease this struggle, we are launching Hoda Academy to be your gateway to online Islamic e-learning. Enroll now and study from our renowned scholars. Learn Aqidah from Dr. Muhammad Salah. Learn Fiqh from Dr. Hatim al Hajj. Learn Hadith from Dr. Muhammad Saeed. Learn Tafsir from Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane. And learn Arabic from our professional instructors. Successful graduates of Hoder Academy will go through a final test and eventually receive a certificate of completion. To enroll and learn more about Hoda Academy, please visit us online at hudaonlineacademy.com. Hood Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge. Dear viewers, Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. Islam is my sight. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Welcome back to our program, The Straight Path. Uh, I did need to take a break because I really need to read your du'as and they're very important to me. So uh, inshallah, we're going to, for the remaining few minutes of the program, ta'ala, we're going to read your du'as uh, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. Like I said in the last episode, a lot of people are going through a lot of difficulties. Everyone around the world has some problem or something that they need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that person, they sent us their du'a, we'll make it for them ta'ala. Everyone says ameen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from us. But as we're making dua, remember one very, very, very important thing. 
that the essence of dua is that you make it for yourself. If you ask someone else to make dua for you, that's great, that's a great help. But you are the one who should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the one who should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what it is that you need because you are the one who is most in need. And when you are most, most in need, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your dua bi-idhnillah ta'ala. So uh, the first dua that we, we want to make is uh, a dua from someone for, for someone who's here inside the channel, Dr. Ahmed Husni. Dr. Ahmed Husni, as some of you may know, is the presenter of our program Health here on Huda TV. And unfortunately, uh, a couple of days ago, his wife and his children got into uh, an accident, a severe accident, and they are in the hospital undergoing operations right now. So we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure them and to give them shifa ta'ala and to make them recover their health and to make them safe and sound ta'ala and to uh, help brother uh, Dr. Ahmed Husni ta'ala to go uh, and, and, and be able to help them and, and undergo this pain and the struggle that he's in right now. Uh, I'm lost for words. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Husni, as you can see on your screen, uh, he's there right now and he's the presenter of our program Health. Uh, Sister Aisha from Algeria, mashallah, she is, uh, she's saying make dua for me to, to succeed in my exams. A lot of people are uh, undergoing exams right now, brothers and sisters, especially the youth who are watching this program. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of you in your exams and to make you get the highest of marks, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, so that you can be beneficial people to the Muslim ummah, to the ummah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everything easy for you. Say bismillah as you're going inside of the exam and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make whatever is difficult to make it easy for you. And of course, study very hard. Sister Hajar also from Bahrain is asking for dua to succeed in her exams, which are coming up very soon. Uh, Sister Hajar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you in your exams bi'idhnillah ta'ala and you'll do great inshaAllah. Brother Umar from Nigeria, sent me a message uh, asking for dua to have a good job because it's been a while since he's graduated and he has no work until now. Uh, Brother Umar, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, I, know, I know how hard things are when it comes to work in many countries around the world, whether uh, wherever you are in the world, whether it's in the east or the west, a lot of people struggling with finding a job. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you rizq from places that you never expected. And remember to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because whenever you have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up doors for you from places that you never expected. That you never expected. Um, and he's also, Brother Umar is asking for a pious wife. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Brother Umar, to give you a pious Muslim wife who will help you ta'ala on the great path and make you, inshallah, you and her will together be on the straight path in this dunya and on the straight path in the akhirah bi ta'ala until you reach Jannah. Brother Nasir also from Nigeria is sick and he is asking for dua for himself and all sick Muslims. Subhanallah, it's such a touching dua because even though he is sick, he's not only asking for dua for himself, but he's asking for dua for himself and for all Muslims so that he can serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you shifa, brother Nasir, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you better so that you can become a better worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a better uh, worker for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless you and bless you and give, give you, cure you from any disease that you are in and make you patient in this trial and tribulation. Sister Khadija from the United Arab Emirates is uh, asking for dua from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive her for her sins. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you, Sister Khadija, and forgive all of us our sins ta'ala, to cure her from her health problems, to make her children righteous, and to grant her a good ending. Ameen, ameen, ameen to all your du'as. Let me read one last du'a, Sister Najida from India. MashaAllah, she is making du'a for Jannah. Such a beautiful thing, subhanAllah. To, I mean, what better thing can you ask for? What better thing can you ask for than for Jannah? She's asking for Jannah and she's asking, uh, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that her and her kids learn the Quran and that her parents make Hajj this year. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you all your three desires and all your three wishes, bi'idhnillah, to make you one of the inhabitants of Jannah, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, to make you and your kids learn the Quran and to 
allow your parents to go to Hajj this year. This is all the time that I had to, to read your du'as next week. I'll be reading more of your du'as and we'll be discussing more topics as we move closer to the month of Ramadan. I hope tonight's episode, my dear brothers and sisters, even though we had quite a few technical difficulties, I hope that it was of benefit and uh, I was really, really honored to be joined by both of my guests. I hope that by learning from this episode, inshallah, we learned two things. We learned what the merits of the month of Sha'ban are so that we can do them and that we can follow them. And we also learned what the innovations of the month of Sha'ban are so that we can avoid them and we can tell all those around us to avoid them, inshallah.